propagating roses from seed takes a little time but is easy to do. Let's take a look at what it takes to start growing roses from seed. Growing roses from your collected rose seeds will save you money from buying seeds and rose seedlings. Subscribe and press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Urban Gardening. Rose seeds grow in pots called hips. These rose hips need to be fully developed before you cut them to get the seeds. The rose hips will start out small and green, then change color as they grow until they are completely red, orange or brown. They usually take about 70 to 100 days from the time they appear on the plant until they are ripe and ready to collect. Gently crack open mature rose hips to reveal the seeds inside. The seeds are surrounded by hairs and flesh. The flesh is actually the fruit of the rose. There may be 3 to 5 seeds per rose hip. The number of seeds in each rose hip varies greatly between rose varieties. Let them dry for 2 days in sun to get rid of any fungus or bacteria. Take a medium pot with some holes at the bottom for drainage. For the soil mix use 30% garden soil, 30% compost, 20% coco peat, 20% river sand and 20% bone meal. Fill the pot with the soil mix. The planting mix should be moist but not soaking wet. So 8 to 10 seeds as the majority of seeds you collect often won't germinate regardless of your efforts. Space them evenly over the surface of the soil mix. Now cover the seeds slightly with the soil mix. Make sure the seeds are about a quarter inch deep in the soil. Tamp soil down with your hand to achieve good seed to soil contact. Water the planted rose seeds well and place the pot outside in direct sun. Rose seeds tend to germinate in cold temperatures but you can also grow them in hot climate. For that give the rose seeds the cold treatment. Put them in a paper towel inside a plastic box and keep them in the fridge for at least 18 to 25 days before you plant them in the soil mix. Rose seeds take up to 20 to 30 days before the first sign of germination appear. Usually you would see two seed leaves pushing out of the soil. These leaves are called as cotyledons or seed leaves. Keep the pot well watered but not soggy. Do not let them dry up as this might affect the germination of your seeds. After few more days, true leaves will start to develop. True leaves are the leaves that emerge after cotyledons. They have a similar appearance to the foliage of the plant. 
but they may be small in size. The main function of the true leaves is to undergo photosynthesis in order to produce food for growth of the plant. Seeds will continue to sprout as long as the weather is cool but will stop sprouting when it gets too hot. Germination time will vary between different types and varieties of roses. Do regular watering to maintain the soil slightly moist, care not to overwater the plants and avoid waterlogged soil. Provide a lot of light as well as good air circulation to the rose seedlings to avoid disease and pests. You will need to keep the soil mix well watered and don't let it to dry out. At this stage of growth, little buds surrounded by sepals will form. These sepals are the small green leaves that you commonly see at the base of the flower. The time it takes for the new roses to actually flower can vary greatly, so be patient with your new rose babies. Continue to water, maintaining a soil that is thoroughly moist but not over watered. During this time, their stems become stronger and their roots deepen in the soil, which can help them grow above the ground. Bloom should pop in about two weeks after bud appears. Growing roses from seed can take some time, but you will be rewarded for your efforts. With seeds, you never know what you will get and how the roses will look like. Some roses will be better than you expected and you can keep growing them. Bloom will last on average 3 to 5 days on the plant. During this period, the plant changes its energy source from leaf production to buds and blooming. With time, more plants will produce buds. As plants are small, so it is obvious that the size of the blooms will also be small. Deadheading or cutting off a spent blossom will allow the plant to grow well and begin its next flowering cycle. At this stage, when the seedlings are 6 to 8 inches tall, you can transplant them carefully into their own individual pots if you wish.